the importance of Polygon after Ethereum 2.0, the Metaverse in 2030, and more. Welcome back everyone to another Polygon Matic update video. Make sure that you are subscribed so you're never missing out. Follow me on Twitter for daily Polygon information at NARB Trading and let's dive in. So today we have a few clips from a recent interview with Polygon Studios head of Metaverse. But before we do that, I want to just quickly point out an announcement from Stator Polygon and that is Stator's capped launch is now live. So you can now stake your Matic and use Matic X while earning staking rewards. If you are unfamiliar, what liquid staking is, is it basically allows you to continue to use your funds without getting locked up while you're staking. So this is a great way to stake your tokens and earn, but avoid losing access to using them. And as you can see, this is currently available with an APY of over 8%. So very cool. If you guys are interested in this, I'll leave the link to this site down below. They also have a really informative thread here that goes over this in more detail. I just wanted to point this out to you guys because I know a lot of you are interested in staking your Matic. But let's go ahead and move on now to just a couple clips I want to play you all today from the team at Polygon Studios. In this first clip, the Metaverse lead, Brian Trunzo, discusses the life of Polygon after so-called Ethereum 2.0, and when Ethereum begins to scale by sharding, what will happen with Polygon? Look at the, um, just the issue of, of gas fees, and that's kind of one, of, I guess, one of the big issues that we continue to see as a little bit of a barricade, at least in terms of exploring expansion in blockchain, especially around NFTs. You guys have obviously solved a lot of that for the blockchain. That being the initiative, is that obviously going to be a continued uh, role of that? Where do you think that plays out as we start to see ETH2 start to roll out and we see the merge occur, which I think is still on in track for this summer? How will Polygon play in that new sandbox? Yeah, I think Polygon just becomes more and more important over time, right? I think the uh, name of the game is scaling the Ethereum virtual machine. I think that is the absolute name of the game that we are playing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is a uh, theory in, um, you know, cryptography in decentralized applications and protocols uh, of sort of Zuku's triangle. There are three points on the triangle. You can only optimize yep. for two. Decentral decentralization, speed, and security. Ethereum famously, uh, you know, optimizes for decentralization uh, and security. Speed will never be sort of a priority for Ethereum, even when it reaches its Super Saiyan final form with sharding and everything that will come years down the line. So that will only make layer twos uh, and those scaling Ethereum like Polygon even more important over time. And I think an analog here that's worth mentioning is how important the UX and UI will be in bringing mm -hmm. about mainstream adoption, right? We need to yeah. abstract away some of these crazy pain points and frictions within crypto that a lot of us don't see people who are Web3 native, right? We don't see how um, difficult it is to actually engage with Web3. You know, you brought up the concept of gas, like even just having to explain that blockchains are in the business of selling block space and you have to pay to be within that block. And that is, that is what gas is, right? These concepts have to be abstracted away. Uh, the way that TCP IP is a concept mm -hmm. that one does not need to know in order to send an email, right? So I, I think we have a, a great sort of confluence of things that are happening in the space that will bring about mainstream adoption, but we have to get through it first. So something we often talk about is yes, Polygon and Layer 2 scaling solutions will still be needed after Ethereum 2.0. And by the way, the whole ETH2 thing is really not what a lot of people think it is. The merge that is coming this summer will not reduce gas fees on Layer 1, but it will reduce energy usage and the issuance rate of ETH. But even when sharding comes, which is the part that is scaling Ethereum, Layer 2s like Polygon will still be needed. Even when sharding comes, it will not completely eliminate high gas fees. You have to keep in mind that demand and activity on the network is only going to grow from here. And as he says, Polygon will actually become more and more important over time. Now in this next clip, they discuss the metaverse or the state of the virtual world by 2030, where things will be, how fast this process is moving, and also of course what role NFTs will play in as well. NFTs will become pretty much the uh, the building blocks of what we're going to have in modern day technology. With that being the case, and NFTs, gaming obviously, we just looked at the city report, gaming will lead the way. We're starting to see some other markets that are starting to kind of um, crack the code a little bit for that. Um, I'm more interested in timeline. Do you feel, uh, and you guys obviously you get a chance to see this stuff early, you get to see the stages and the roadmaps. Do you think this is something that will uh, meet some of the expectations that are put out by the market by 2030? 
Yeah, I think that 2030 date is a, a really great date to circle on our calendars and, and revisit, uh, you know, eight years from now. It's always hard to, to pick a date, right? But it, something that we like to say in Web3 is that Web3 is speed running. Um, all that came before it, right? So in DeFi, right. we're, speed, we're speed running Western finance, right? Yeah. In, in uh, gaming, we're speed running Web2. And, you know, if you look at um, the proliferation of the internet from Web1 to Web2 and you kind of track through the mid nineties into the early aughts, really where the explosion started to happen, yep. went through uh, a bear cycle and then really exploded. Uh, you know, you're really looking at a 15 to 20 year uh, ramp up for web mm -hmm. one and web two. And uh, you know, if things remain the same, that is if we continue to live in dog years as we do in web three, because one day often feels like seven. Um, I think that that 2030 date could be a real seminal date that carries real weight uh, and that we can fulfill a lot of the promises of Web3 by that date. I, I do think it's a reasonable date. So just a few short clips there, folks, that I wanted to play for you today. I'm always fascinated to hear from the teams that are actually involved with this kind of stuff to give their takes on timelines and things like that. But I certainly do think that things will be much different in 2030 than it is right now. I'm sure there will be some sort of virtual world that we can all participate in and earn while playing games as well. And the next eight years are definitely going to be fun to watch play out. But those folks were the updates that I wanted to go over for today. I thank you all very much for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed so you're never missing out. Leave a like, it really helps me. I'll see you all next time.